Hey everybody, welcome to another game of War Machine. I'm Light Em Up, Donald here, and I got a battle between my buddies Kador, uh, going with Commander Harkovich and Double Colossal, using uh, Connie, uh, Conquest and a Victor, or Connie and Vicky as everyone wants to call them, and my Forces of Scorn, uh, going with Xerxes 1. So, this is a preface, this game was played on a Saturday night at War Machine weekend, this past weekend, it was about 11.30 at night, and after a long day of War Machine, so, if you see a few mistakes in there, that's just, that's just chalk it up to that. Uh, for everyone that I saw War Machine Weekend, uh, I know I saw Jason uh, and Josh, a couple of the guys that I got to meet for the first time. It was really awesome to meet you guys, and hopefully I'll get a couple of our battle reports if I got them in with you guys up very soon. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into the list. His list is pretty easy. You got, uh, like I said, Conquest and Victor with Harkovich, uh, Commander Joe with the Rifle Corps and three Grenadiers, and then Ragman and Battle Mechanics. So, on to my list. Uh, this is just a Xerxes 1 list that I drew up, uh, drew together on my way to War Machine Weekend on Saturday. Decided I was just going to play that all weekend long, uh, the rest of the weekend, because I was really out of all the competitive tournaments and decided that's what I wanted to do. You see, uh, it's pretty simple. We got Tippers in there. I think he's pretty much mandatory, especially with his bond. Um, with Xerxes, got the Despoiler for the uh, free upkeep and the minus two uh, arm because of uh, Dark Shroud. And then uh, Gladiator in there, of course, for Rush. Uh, Max Cats with the Ferax and Redeem, which is like uh, just the best unit Scorn has currently. Uh, minimum unit of Karax because they're all I had painted. And then uh, Totem Hunter and Beast Handlers. So this list is pretty good. I like the way it turns out and it can put out an awful lot of damage. So Kind of a dream matchup for me. You know, I got my armor crack list going up against a high armor list. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, going into the scenario, we're playing the entrenched scenario. You guys see here the two zones with the two objectives in the middle. Uh, I'm pretty sure I took, I know I took bunker. Uh, I don't know what my opponent took. I think he took, uh, I don't think he really decided what he took. We just kind of threw, he, I think he just kind of threw the list together. But uh, on the first turn, he actually won turn to go first. Um, I chose this side because I had the force that was protecting the corner of my zone. There's that little sliver that is poking out above the force, but I'm not really concerned about that. Um, the important thing is I can hide behind the forest from his big rockets and uh, rocketeers and everything and still be in my zone. So, turn one, I mean, it's pretty standard. Everything goes up uh, on his side, the way everything always goes. Um, let's see. We get tough on the Winter Guard from Mr. Joseph Grigorovich. Grigorovich? Joseph? Com com uh, Commandant Joe? Oh, whatever his name is. Captain Joseph. Everyone knows what I'm talking about, right? Alright, anyway. So, Joe gives the Winter Guard tough and he goes ahead and charges up the field. Or maybe just walks up. I'm not really sure. Got pretty far though. Either way, doesn't really matter. Friendly game. Uh, I ended up, I did make uh, Joe, Kovnik Joe, that's his name, Kovnik Joe. I did end up making Kovnik Joe my uh, prey target for the Total Hunter. And then the Winter Guard ran up into position. The Conquest and Vic Victor both ran up uh, seven inches after Harkovich cast mobility. I guess more than seven inches, whatever, like ten inches. So Harkovich cast mobility and then ran up camping three. Uh, on to my turn, I'm just checking a couple uh, threat ranges here with the guns. I know Connie and Vicky both have pretty big guns for, uh, big long range guns, which is pretty devastating. Uh, I mean, Conquest literally has crit devastation on it, so, you know, it's literally devastating. Um, uh, and then we're going to go into my turn. Xerxes puts up both of his upkeeps, uh, brings him down to zero fury, so he'll be camping zero. Uh, put... Tactical Supremacy on the Karax and also gave them the push to the limit so they're going to actually shield wall 11 inches which is why they went so far. Um, since Tactical Supremacy happens at the end of your activation not the end of the turn you might as well just walk them 11 inches. Uh, and then he also put his other upkeep of uh, Defender's Ward onto the Ferax to so make them 15, 19 and thanks to Redeem they're going to have dodge if they're in Redeem's control area. So Xerxes is camping zero. Uh, Ran tippers up right next to him so he can have his shield guard protecting him because I don't want him to get shot off the board that easily. Uh, Despoiler runs up behind the Ferax to be able to give his Dark Shroud wherever he needs to go next turn 
And then Gladiator just stays behind. He's just uh, more of a buff bot than anything else. Uh, on to my opponent's turn two. Harkovich is going to activate uh, first. He's going to be going ahead and uh, casting broadsides uh, and mobility on this turn. And I think here he is casting the mobility. Uh, my opponent's deciding whether or not he wants to spend the three to cast the broadsides. At this point, he didn't realize that I had no fury on me. I think he may have tried to focus fire more into me. He does realize it uh, eventually in the turn, but currently he does not realize it. Uh, you see the other three focus comes off and he goes ahead and casts broadsides. Um, starts taking some shots. His gunshot, I don't think, did anything. Uh, he shot into a... Uh, shot one of the Karax. This is the Victor's first gunshot from broadside. Or I guess his broadside gunshot going off. He uses the incendiary shot to set, I think, five of my guys on fire. Three or four of the Karax and uh, two of the Ferax. Four of the Karax and two Ferax. So, and then he also catches Redeem in that uh, fire template also. So he catches like seven guys on my front lines. Uh, you see me moving a couple of Karax back on the other side. And that's because... Conquest was able to get a crit devastation onto my Karax model and threw everyone back an inch. Didn't end up actually killing anyone because shield they still ended up in shield wall um, and he could not roll high enough to actually kill anybody. He did knock down three Karax though. Uh, the one cat though, they're steady so cats don't give a shit. Um, but that was a pretty good, pretty good shot for him. I mean, he's grouping up my guys together and he's going to get another shot with Victor here eventually. Um, I believe at this point is when he realizes that I have no fury on me and decides that he might as well attempt to try to take me out. I forgot to mention, um, his caster, Harkovich, did pop his feet, so the Conquest will be at plus three armor this next turn. Uh, there is the Winter Guard moving up. They do a massive CRA into Xerxes, all six of them. Uh, obviously the Rocketeers do not participate in that. I go ahead and shield guard that to Tiberian, and then all three Rocketeers take shots at Xerxes, and while all three of them hit because they have boosted attack rolls from Joe, um, they all did a total of eight damage to Xerxes, so not really fantastic. Uh, here's the victor just walking up into the zone. He's going to be locking that zone down, making sure I don't, I'm not able to score on it, and he's going to shoot at the knockdown Karax, and ends up still missing because you rolled one two needing a four or something like that to hit uh and sets the other like five or six guys on that side of the line on fire i think all in total i had uh 10 of my troops on the front line were on fire this turn his side guns tried to shoot the ferax and he dodged out of the way so that the next one couldn't shoot him the next gun tried to shoot the carax and while it hit it wasn't able to break armor because he's still in shield wall uh his Conquest moves up, and the Conquest is going to take shots into Xerxes. So once we make sure that he can see Xerxes, I was trying to get the Ferax to block line of sight to Xerxes, but was unable to do that. Um, he goes ahead and takes a shot into Xerxes and manages to get a crit dev again, throwing, you see Xerxes move back five inches, killing one of his own beast handlers, and then the Gladiator gets thrown back as well. Tibbers, of course, doesn't move because he's Tibbers, but... Um, there's a few more points of damage to Xerxes. I kind of intended him to attempt to assassinate me. I thought if I could get him to uh, try an assassination attempt, I mean a relatively low chance assassination attempt, uh, I thought if I could try to get him to try one, that I would set myself up to be in better position, or more or less set him up to be in worse position um, to attack me, or to, you know, to carry on the game. If he was unable to kill me, which he was unable to do, I think he leaves me on eight boxes after all the uh, damage rolls he's able to do. See right here, he's just taking some minigun shots, uh, hitting a couple of Ferrax. Some of them are dodging away. One of them actually gets hit for a couple points of damage, but he doesn't actually able to kill anything. So um, I think it's worth it drawing out that assassination run. Uh, I just did some quick math on my head based on what he needed to do and how much uh, armor I have. I mean, yeah, he could have spiked some damage on those brutal damage rocket shots, but it's risky, but it wasn't too risky, I didn't think. Um, You'll see if you watch enough of my videos or if you ever play me in an actual game, I don't mind baiting out assassination attempts if I think it'll put me in good position to take your pieces off the board. Um, now on this turn, 
Obviously, he's got plus three armor, so cracking armor 23 Kador Colossals with 62 boxes is a little difficult. So I'm just going to uh, stall for this turn. You'll see we just did the fire damage rolls, and out of 10 fire checks, seven of them went out. So yay scorn. I guess we like fire. The other three that didn't go out did no damage to the Karax and one point of damage to my one cat. So awesome. <laughs> it's like... I'll take that every day of the week. That's fantastic. Um, my totem hunter, I'm not really sure what, I'm supposed to, what I should do with him. So I just go ahead and charge him uh, into the objective there and do a grand total of three damage points to it, which is whatever. I'm not really sure the uh, totem hunter is going to do much. Um, he's concerned about the totem hunter killing Joe, which is what I wanted him to be concerned about. Uh, I wanted to kill Joe and then start taking out some of those battle mechanics because the worst thing about trying to kill... Colossals is when they have a mechanic sitting behind them trying to repair them. Um, that just makes you know for a significantly less fun day. Uh, the Karax on the other hand, you see them. I went into shield wall with them again, walked up and did a couple CMA, uh, did one CMA and one straight shot, and then was managed to kill one Rocketeer and one normal uh, rifle core. The other three just sacrificed their actions to move. And they went back into shield wall and gummed up those front lines there for me, which is good. Because uh, like I said, all I want to do is stall. I'm not going to be sending anything into his Colossals this turn. Um, just basically treating this turn as a time walk. Uh, you'll see me positioning my cats and the despoiler there so that uh, Vic Victor can't get in there and uh, kill me off. Or can't get in there and kill off despoiler. Um, also doing it so where... They will have, if he stays where he is or moves forward any, they'll be in charge range of the victor. Uh, and then Xerxes actually gave himself the push to the limit, walked seven inches into the zone, and then positioned Tiberian uh, within shield guard range in front of Xerxes. So I am uh, camping four this turn. I'm not an idiot. I've got eight health, and I don't need him to get a couple lucky shots on me. So I'm camping four, health, uh, four Fury this turn. And we'll see what he's able to do. So, on to my opponent's turn three. Uh, Joe ends up, actually, he's going to end up giving bear strength to the Winter Guard here in a minute. Um, I think he is still deciding. I think we're still in, the, uh, still in the phase of decision phase. So, right now, he's measuring out to see how far he can get with Joe through that rough terrain. And he's able to walk close enough to get inside stealth range. And only does, I think, two points of damage to my Totem Hunter, which is good for me. Uh, Totem Hunter, I mean, like I said, he's over there more of a harassment. I don't think he's not going to do an awful lot this game. Um, but my opponent got really, really concerned with him and decided he wanted to ensure the Totem Hunter died, which I am perfectly okay with. Um, he is a powerful piece. You know, if, if I make the caster the prey target after I kill Joe, he can put a big heart in on the caster, so... Uh, power 16, map 12 can do a lot of damage. Um, so instead, Victor turns to face the Totem Hunter and takes him off the board with a couple gunshots. Or fists. One of the two. Not really sure. Doesn't matter. Killed, killed the Totem Hunter. My opponent was concerned about giving his back to me, but after deciding that Defense 7 doesn't really care if he's Defense 5, you know, not really that big of a deal. Um, at this point, he's deciding what he needs to do to be able to get Victor, or sorry, the Conquest, uh, over to Tiberian to put the smack down on Tiberian. So you see he's moving the Winter Guard out of the way, um, starting to attack the Karax with the Winter Guard. And he's going to be able to have just enough attacks to kill. There's two, there's three... And there goes my fourth Karak. So he's going to kill four Karaks, uh, leave the last two alive, uh, thanks to Shield Wall and Defense 12. So, uh, but cleared off his path, so he's going to have a clear path to Tiberian. Once Harkovich decides that he is out of range of the cats being able to charge him or walk up and jump over into him. So Harkovich casts mobility again to allow the Conquest enough speed to walk and engage Tiberian. And then he's going to camp three so that he can uh, make sure he can live if I get any junk, janky stuff on him. Alright, so here goes Conquest. He walks up to uh, Tiberian and he is hitting 
He needs a force to hit, and he is dice plus two because for some god awful reason, colossals are for Kator colossals are uh, power and strength twenty three base, uh, which is insane. So he gets down to his one last roll, and I'm gonna let you guys hear. Alright, so if you guys uh, couldn't hear that, he, he needed a 4 to hit, and all he needed to do was hit, because I had 4 hit points left, and he grabbed the dice, he looked up at me and said, I'm going to miss, aren't I? And then he rolled the dice and rolled double ones, so we all thought that was pretty hilarious. There was a couple people watch. Uh, I think a couple people came over and were watching the game at this point, because you know, it's pretty slow at 11.30 at night, uh, but it was just pretty, pretty hilarious. I mean, he looks up at me and goes, I'm going to miss this, aren't I? I hope. <laughs> and Tiberian is a very angry elephant at this point. So uh, he switches over the clock and we go on to Scorn turn three. Um, at this point, I'm just trying to decide. Uh, obviously, I know I need to kill Conquest. Uh, I've already got one control point because I was able to score last turn uh, on my turn two. Uh, he would stop me from scoring this turn, obviously. But I know I'm going to kill this Conquest. Uh, my decision is just. Um, can I kill both in this turn? So you see me laying down some proxy bases there, uh, trying to decide if I can get enough stuff into control range to be to benefit from my feet. Um, and while I decide that I know I can get to spoiler in my control range for my feet and attack victor, I just don't want to don't want to have to risk it. So we're gonna go for the sure thing. Play it a little safe. Um, go ahead and pop my feet and just take Conquest off the board. So uh, first things first is the Beast Handlers move up and they enrage uh, Tibbers and the Despoiler just in case. And then Xerxes goes ahead, gives himself uh, his Stir the Blood battle plan so that he can hit at dice plus, or he can hit at uh, power of strength 22. Charges the Conquest and at Four dice double weapon master, or four dice charge with a combo strike, hitting at power and strike 22, managed to do 22 points of damage to Conquest, which is awesome. Uh, at that point, I do buy one more attack to get another weapon master hit into him, and then go ahead and heal two points off of Tiberian so that he is uh, fully healthy. And then we're here goes Tibbers. Tibbers is gonna walk up, uh, turn around because Scorn doesn't like facing their opponents apparently. Uh, turn around and start smacking him with the Tetsubo. Now he only uh, he only smacks the Conquest with the Tetsubo itself. He actually uses his two other initials to kill off two of the Rifle Corps because why not? And then it takes a total of uh, three Tetsubo swings uh, to kill kill the conquest and then I still had the gladiator in the back if I needed to the gladiator could have charged in and finished him off if necessary um, after that the Karax go and the Karax doing a couple more cleanup shots to kill off a couple uh, winter guard and then it's just into position so I decide his walking threat with mobility uh, I want to keep my spoiler and my cats out of that range so that he can't just come up and wreck my face uh, you see right now the cats are just running, getting a, kind of a half circle around Victor. I mean, if he wants to stay in the zone, he will be in threat range. Redeem goes in and kills off the objective so that he can uh, score me another control point. So it'll be three to nothing scoring at this point. And then it's on to my opponent's turn. So three to nothing scoring and it's not looking good for Harkovich. He's going to go through some of the math real quick. He's asking me how much fury I'm sitting on and making sure I'm sitting on, I think, uh, two fury at this point because I dropped one of my spells and the other spell was upkept by a despoiler for free. And then after a little bit of decision points, uh, trying to decide what exactly he can get done, 
he goes ahead and decides that uh, even if he can kill off a couple of my models and even one of my heavies, not going to be able to win. So he goes ahead and concedes, and it'll be a scorn victory. All right. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you were at War Machine Weekend, once again, it was great to see you there. And then I uh, hope to see you next week. Or sorry, next year. <laughs> if I wish it was next week. I hope to see you guys next year at War Machine Weekend. If you were unable to make it out, uh, please put it on your calendar. It's usually the first weekend, possibly the second weekend of November. Uh, I'm sure uh, Carl, Carl Morgan from uh, Meta Games down in Springfield, Missouri, will have the uh, announcement out soon enough as to when the next War Machine Weekend is actually going to be. But if you guys can ever make it there, it's a great time. If, even if you're not a competitive player, there's tons of things to do. Hobby Lounge, uh, there's Iron Arena games going on, there's Guild Ball if you're into that. There's other uh, miniature games that are in the other halls. And then there's obviously if you're a competitive player, there's tons of competitiveness. There's hobby classes in the Hobby Lounge. Uh, RPGs if you're an IK RPG going on. Uh, but try to get out to War Machine Weekend next year, guys. This is a little just promo for it. Uh, if not, I uh, hope to see you in the comments section below. Uh, reminder everybody, I do have a Facebook page now, so go find me at uh, facebook.com slash lightemupwmh. No apostrophe in there, I don't think. Um, the link will be in the doobly-doo down below and at the end of the video. So please let me know what you think of the video. I uh, love comments. I try to respond to all of them, and I'll see you all next week. Have a great one.